Okay, and I just want to go back into um, bad runs and you know that sort of thing because a lot of people watching this have continuous bad runs and they can't make it pay. So we want to learn. Now, a lot of people we I've spoken to before have said that they have to constantly evolve with their betting and what used to work in the past doesn't work anymore. How long do you carry on in a certain way before you can see that something you're doing no longer is no longer viable for a uh, profit? I, I think there's been certain times when I've when I've thought I I was doing okay. A certain track, for instance, I, I I'll, I'll just use Newcastle as as an example. Um, I try to apply my rules and what I look for for Newcastle when it came Tapita and and um, when it came an all weather track. And I applied my normal science, you know, speed figures and sectionals, blah, blah, blah. And for one reason or another, I just couldn't get a grip on, on what was what the requirements were there. I think one week there was a low draw bias, or next week there was a high draw bias, and then there was the wind involvement that used to blow from the one side of the track to the other. And I got to the point where I just could not make a profit there. I think I must have put up... Somebody told me, actually, that, that I'd put up 40... 40 um, selections at Newcastle and I did tip a winner but I'd, I it got blinded in the, the in the in the other results when I was doing quite well at the other tracks and I didn't really realize Newcastle was my bogey track so it was only when when I was actually told Andy I think this is you need to have a look at this that I, I did actually kind of question my judgment and and quickly I, I realized that there were the that Newcastle along with certain other tracks for one reason or another I, I either haven't got an understand enough understanding of it and I can't seem to put the horses into that track and and, and and make it work for me. I find Kenton another very difficult track to sort of get a handle on. So I think it comes with experience. I think after a, a certain period of time, you realise that if then if something is not going right, it is, is to avoid it. Because there are, let's face it, a million other racetracks that um, you know you, you can concentrate your mind on. So, yeah, I think... I think um, I think, like I say, I've done a lot of that. It just comes down to experience. Have, is, have you ever had such a bad run that you've seriously doubted your ability and thought I might turn this in? Never. That's one thing I, I can never actually put my hand on my heart and say. I've had bad runs where it got to the point where, I've, yeah, I questioned my judgment. Um, I think probably about a year ago, I had a terrible September. And it was only really, I realised afterwards that September was such a bad month because of several factors. I'd burnt myself out through working heavily through the summer. There was also a significant um, climatic change. There was, there was, we'd had fast ground throughout the summer, and then all of a sudden, you know, it was getting towards the back end of the year. The horses were getting tired as well. The, a lot of horses I were getting fast speed figures for in the summer that they were they were they were worn out as well. Um, so the. I, and I was trying to tip those same horses again because I thought, well, they've done a good time, they'll do it again. They weren't doing it. Um, they were running on ground that they weren't used to running on. So I was trying to put a square peg in a round hole, really. Um, and I had a really bad run. But it's only after I came through that bad run and I realised what I'd done wrong or where I was going wrong. So when I enter a period whereby I think there's going to be a change and historically I've done badly, thinking, well, these are my bad months, because of the, the switch over, if you like, particularly from end of the flat to end, start the jumps to the start end of the jumps. I'm a little bit more wary of that now. So when September comes, I'll try pro perhaps just ease down a little bit. Yeah, I can still carry on doing what I'm doing, but I wouldn't be so gung-ho. I'd drop my stake a little bit and just be a little bit more cautious. And is it important to have time out totally? Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm not one to advocate that, by the way. <laughs> it's in my lifestyle, and again, up early and you know, looking after a young lad and, and doing the hours that I do. But I relish time off more than I ever did um, particularly over the Christmas period I love when there's no racing it's great a lot of pro punters are like oh can't wait to get back on board or oh, when's boxing day coming whereas I embrace the two two or three days off no work no times no looking into in, I, I do enough of this every day to um, deserve a little bit of a break for instance we're just coming through the period obviously where the uh, equine um, flu has um, grabbed hold of racing I've loved it. Other than the odd Irish card, it's been absolutely brilliant. I've been able to spend time with my boy. Um, I've done a, you know, gone to the coast, gone to the holiday home, and ju just enjoyed and relaxed. And I've actually woke up in the morning, thinking, oh great, I haven't got to do, any I haven't got to do anything today. It's a, it's lovely when you're in that 
you know, 24-7, 365 days a year, you do appreciate the time off. So you mentioned young, you've got a young family. How does that impact on your studies? Um, I had to um, mould it around, work it around. I, um, when, he, when he came along, I thought, how am I still going to do what I, I do? But I somehow managed to dovetail it in. You do, you find a way as a, as a dad, as a, as a, a professional, um, you know, in a, in a, you know, we got this as a normal nine to five job for me. Um, so yeah, you, you just streamline it. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll do it in a different way than I used to. I'll probably get up a little bit early. I'll work a little bit longer in the day. Let's say when he goes to bed, I'll find an extra hour after he's got the bed, um, to compensate for the hour that I spend with him when I play with him in the living room before tea time. He, I can't justify, um, having obviously he, not playing with him that's part of what dad should do um, just because I'm here at home and you know most dads go out and I'm here at home I've still got to uh, feel as though I, you know that he, did, he deserves my full attention I don't want to have a, a young boy that's coming up to me and going daddy 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 and I'm saying I'm just watching this three o'clock at Chepstow that's not the dad I want to be so I think it's getting the balance right between work and, and pleasure and spending time with your family and um, it's not perfect but I like to think I'm getting there Okay, and you mentioned Chepstow there. Now, do speed figures transfer accurately from course to course? For example, if someone did a blister in time at Chepstow, would it necess- you know could you confidently back it running at uh, Cheltenham, for example? Um, I'd certainly there's some courses that you would be very um, sceptical about uh, when they do particularly fast times. Um, Chepstow very much is a law into itself. The undulations there suit, suit certain horses. I think horses can get a breather in at the bends, um, and it's very much a horse that's got uh, boundless stamina. Often you get the ground that's very, very testing. So consequently, if they go on a, a track where the ground is usually pretty much uniformly bet, much better, i.e. a good ground, they're, they're likely to get taken off their feet. So again, again, it's all about interpretation. The speed figures are just a... A starting point to each race. They're not the the be all and end all. They're, they're, it's almost like the evidence you, you give to a jury and say, well, here's the evidence. You know, do you convict this person or not? You, you kind of and that's what I do. Yes, it, you know, my my database will throw up a horse's career history or the last twelve months history, but it doesn't necessarily mean that he's going to run to that figure all the time. Um, there's a lot of uh, in, intuitive study as well with, with it you know you have to analyze w- w- what conditions it's 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 run under to achieve that time particularly there's a certain track um, so the transference from one track to another um, is, is a is a very very difficult balancing act um, but if something's done a good a good figure at a certain track i.e. like a Chepstow then you pretty much know damn that it'll go and do it again at some stage now I'm guessing that you would have figures for each course so when you're sitting down to watch Chepstow, for example, do you have a buzzer figure? If this horse goes through that, then you know we've got a good race on yeah. the hands here. Yeah, um, there's been several races this season already whereby the, the pace has been strong throughout, and they've got that strung out like washing. You can tell it's good by just by watching it. And when you go down and crunch the numbers and do the sectionals, um, you, you think, wow, this is this is definitely worth following. Um, there are certain tracks that don't, that just I don't know why just don't throw up big numbers. Um, I think a lot of them are all down to the, you know, the, the kind of horses that run there. Uh, some horses are just not capable of running fast for, a, for a, a long period of time where the better horses, you know, your Newbies, your Ascots, your Haydocks, uh, your Warwicks, the, the, the Doncasters, the, almost like the, where they've got grade one action. Um, they, they often, um, um, throw, you know, they're, 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 that's where they're, they're most of the better races tend to come from. And these are, I think I'm finding that as, a, as a, the older I get and the more studying I do. I tend to make more money out of the better races nowadays. A lot of punters actually look the opposite and they'll try and make money out of the, the weaker class races to find edges a little bit further down the line. Yes, of course, I am going to find that with the figures, but predominantly that's where m- most of my um, decent income comes from is, is uh, the ones who run championship times are really big numbers and, and when they're back in that environment again. Now I'm guessing you're watching the times as races are running. You, do you never... Did you ever... Um sort of feel about transferring that to betting and running. You see something and you think, mm-hmm. blimey, this has been in front. Is that either have to be better than Frank or it can't possibly win. I should be laying that. Is that something yeah. you've considered doing? There's lots of times when I've, when I've watched racing and running that you can recognise horses are going off too fast. I think there's so many good judges out there that they, they can spot it as well. The hard pullers, the ones that are going 
you know, half a second, a second too quickly. I think if we had sectional times in this country and it was up on the screen, you could see that for yourself. You know, the average um, time for a, for a furlong would be 12 to 13 seconds. So if something is doing 11, 11, 11, it's going to pay for that at the end of the race. Just common, um, you know, science tells you that. That's what's going to happen. Um, so I think if we, if we did have sectionals that were up on the screen, um, that would be a huge advantage for everyone. But because of that, I actually think for people like me who actually make a living out of doing time figures and sectionals, it takes away our advantage. So I actually don't want that to be incorporated. I don't want all this jargon up on websites and so it's freely available to the, to the general public. I like to do it myself. And because I'm doing it myself, I like to think that there's not that many other people who've got the time and effort to do it. And I'm, that's where I'm getting my edge. So I, I kind of like want it to stay as it is, even though I think for the race, for the racing in the general um, scheme of things, we'll be better for it. 